Chapter 7. Cool, Brenna says as we walk into the kitchen. I love this room. It is in the oldest part of the house. Graham combined the original dining room and the kitchen into one giant room with a fireplace and a couch, along with the normal stuff like tables, chairs, and a microwave. A sliding glass door looks out onto the patio in the backyard. It's the best part of the house, without a doubt. David stretches out onto the couch. You can bring me my grape snow. Brenna throws a pillow at his head. Ow! Do you want some help? Sunita asks me. I scan the pantry. There's not a lot to eat, I say, over the noise of Brenna and David's pillow fight. But we have plenty of dog biscuits. You've got to have something else, says David as a pillow sails over his head. How about some ice cream or chocolate-covered pretzels? Dog biscuits, liver treats. Hang on, I'm still looking. Boy, do we need to go shopping. Some people like the way dog biscuits taste, Sunita says. The pillow fight stops. We all stare at her. Not me, she says, blushing. I read it in a magazine, really. I believe you, I say. Let me try the cupboard. We have pasta, canned peas, oatmeal. I move the oatmeal container aside. Aha! The last of the Girl Scout cookies. That's more like it, says David. There aren't too many cookies, so I take a jar of pickles out of the fridge and set that out on the table, too. I love pickles. I'll take the Thin Mints, David says. He crams two cookies in his mouth. I whistle and Sherlock trots into the kitchen. I toss him a dog biscuit. Well, he certainly looks healthy, says Sunita as she wipes cookie crumbs off her mouth. Sherlock is never sick, I say. He's sort of our mascot. We have a cat, too, named Socrates. Wait until you see him. He's the boss. It must be so wonderful to be surrounded by animals every day, Sunita says with a sigh. What's the best part about living here? I never really thought about it. I take a bite of pickle. I guess I like getting to know our patients. Animals are like people to me. Sometimes they're better than people, you know what I mean? David nods. You can trust them. And they trust you, adds Sunita. They all have personalities, and most of them are fun. It's great to watch Gran make a sick animal feel better, or help owners understand how to take care of their pets. There must be bad parts, though, Brenna says. The worst part is when an animal, or when an owner doesn't treat a pet properly. And it's hard to not to get upset and cry when animals die. But it is such a rush to help animals and their owners. That makes up for the sad times. I'm definitely going to be a veterinarian when I grow up. Which is why you should do your homework, Brenna points out. Please, I'm eating. What's wrong with homework? Sunita asks. Maggie hates it. She's kind of grounded because she keeps blowing it off, Brenna explains. She pulls a pickle out of the jar. That's why I'm here. Dr. Mack asked me to help with some of Maggie's chores in the clinic. I flash her a look and she freezes with the pickle halfway to her mouth. At least for a while, she adds. Sunita take takes a pickle too. I wish I could come here every day. David slaps his forehead. Brainstorm, he shouts. I'm a genius. Yeah, right, I say. The girls laugh. No, listen, he says. This is a really good idea. We should all volunteer here. We could come after school and on weekends. Awesome, Brenna says. Awful. Could we? asked Sunita. They stare at me like golden retrievers begging for a walk. I don't know, I begin. We're sort of used to doing things on our own around here. No, really, Maggie, we'd make a great team, Brenna says. Think about it. I'm strong and not afraid to get dirty. Sunita is friendly and smart. Now, David, what would he do? David makes a face and Sunita giggles. Brenna nods. Okay, he's good for a laugh now and then. And we're all nuts about animals. Look at how great we handled the puppies that came in today. We'll be like junior vets or something. You did help out with the puppies, I say. That worked out okay, I guess. Of course it did, Brenna says. Now we need a plan. We have to show Dr. Mack that she needs us every day. We don't need a plan, David says. Dr. Mack loves us. Brenna and Sunita look at each other and crack up. Are you always this optimistic? Sunita asks. 
You mean unrealistic, Brenna says. You have to think positive, David says. Like with my mom, whenever I ask for anything, I assume she's going to say yes. Does it work? Sunita asks. Well, not always, David admits. But it's worth trying, he leans back. It's going to work. I know it. Dr. Mack is a smart lady. She's not going to say no to volunteers like us. I'm seeing a very nice future. That's not what I see. I see trouble. I get up from the table and rummage in the cupboard for a napkin so the others can't see my face. I hope Gran says no. We don't need their help around here, not even Brenna's. Gran has me. I'm not a real vet, but I know how to do all the little stuff. This is my place. I don't want anyone else around. What do you think, Maggie? Sunita asks. Luckily for me, the phone rings just then. Hang on, guys, I say. Or I pick it up. Hello? There's no response. Brenna laughs at something David says. I turn my back to them and cover my ear so I can hear better. Hello, I say again, louder. Maggie, this is your Aunt Rose. Oh, hi, Aunt Rose. Rose is my father's sister. She and Gran hardly ever talk. They don't get along. Aunt Rose and her daughter Zoe, my cousin, live in New York City. Rose is an actress in a soap opera or something. How are you, she asks. Her voice is smooth, like the announcer on a shampoo commercial. Fine. Not really. How are you? Fabulous. I've been offered a role, a leading role, in a new TV sitcom. I'm leaving for Los Angeles tomorrow. Um, congratulations. Brenna says something to the others, and they run back to the clinic. Do you want to talk to Gran? Yes, thank you. I set the phone down and call Gran on the intercom to pick up. I have a funny feeling about this.